Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Bology. Manage and measure your player's skill development and increase accountability year-round utilizing the Bology app. Boost inter-squad competition with drills backed by the National High School Basketball Coaches Association, including a 40-shot Bology skills assessment. Please visit Bology.com slash teams for information on how you can provide this resource for your team. Kind of what you just talked about with, with, that, with the rip light, you know, with those types of accountability tools, you know, I'm a believer in them and I've seen what it's done for our players, but there are coaches out there that are going to say that if it's not in a game, like even two ball is too much for them because you don't play with two. Uh, but it, it, if, if there's not a tennis ball, med ball, a foam pad, uh, anything that we like to use for accountability, if it's not in a the game, then it's not, they don't want to use it. What's kind of your thought process behind the accountability tools that you use? Um, I think for the most part, when people think that way, they're, they're trying to look at basketball through a very um, literal mindset. Um, and so I think the easiest way where I try to get people's minds to go first is go to a strength and conditioning atmosphere. You know, those coaches would not look at a strength coach and say, hey, you better be, you know, I don't want to do any bench pressing or, or, you know, bicep curls because that's not in the game. I don't want to do any plyo boxes because there's no boxes in the game. They wouldn't you better not use a sandbag at all in the weight room because right. the sandbag's not. Yeah, I get that. Right. So, so they're looking at everything from very little perspective because that's what they do. Um, and so I'm always really big on just understanding, Hey, we're not focusing on game situations right now. I'm not working on even direct game transfer always right now. I'm working on giving someone's body something they don't already have giving their skills something that they don't already have. And you do that um, through sometimes completely different tasks to equip them. Um, and so you have to look at it that way first. So if you're trying to look at, you know, a, a medicine ball, if I'm, if I'm holding a medicine ball in an arm and you're trying to look at it as strictly a game situational perspective, it won't always make sense. Mm -hmm. But once you start realizing, hey, I'm just trying to build characteristics, traits, qualities, and you start listing those things out and that will benefit a player by, this, this, and that, that's how they have to start looking at, at some of that stuff. If you were a high school coach and you had, so, you know, you have your team aspect and the, and whatever system or style of play that you want your players to fit into, and you know that there are certain movements, certain patterns that they're going to use. So you, you understand that, but then you also want to grow their individual skill. What would like, if, if the player was a pie chart and also you have shooting in there too, that you got to spend yeah. some time on, how would you kind of divide up their time? Um, I, I actually don't, um, let, I'll, I'll explain. So skills are very interconnected. Um, so for instance, I have a, a player in right now, he's a high school player from Mississippi. And that's what typically we do is, is I I'm our headquarters is here in Michigan and I train hundred percent travelers. So every week of the year, I have someone from another country or another state in training and, and several at a time. So right now I have a six foot five, six foot six kid from Mississippi who's only been trained to be a big, for instance. So I started doing some ball handling stuff and I asked him, hey, did your coaches ever have you do ball handling? No, right? So they just have you do this and that. And so they're, he's doing all post related stuff. And, and a lot of coaches are past that. They're very more well um, you know, balanced, but let's say that this kid will never do anything outside of post work. His coach will never let him, right? So it would be a lot of times the approach to say, if he's never going to use it, I'm not going to give it to him. So I'm going to keep doing the things that will allow him to maybe be successful next year. The problem is there's coordinative elements, there's movement elements, and there's things that exist within the skills that he may never use, but will actually help him become a better basketball player. And so it's really more so about hitting a giant checklist yeah. when it comes to skills. We got to separate it away from the game and say, I want to give every player these qualities. And that's a big, big list. And if I do it, if I give them all the drop footwork, the pockets, I make sure his body's moving right, his shoulders are able to lower, his hips are able to engage, I'm able to do all of that. Even if he doesn't use those specific things, it's going to make him better at what he does do. 
yeah. because skills connect to other skills. Um, and so I think the most important thing is for coaches to come up with a really well-balanced plan to give all players little pieces of everything in a skill environment. And then obviously when you're doing your game work, then roll them up and, and do them based off of how you use them. Yeah. And I think there's a, I know that there's going to be some coaches listening to this that like at faith we're positionless. So the way that you're talking about training, it it's right in line with what we do here because I want all of them to be getting better at everything. And so I have, we have to using your training tools. I mean, I feel like we're really able to cover a lot of those skills, a lot of those areas you're talking about. It, I think most coaches out there, like they understand ball handling, like the old pistol Pete stuff that you and I love, you know, mm -hmm. like they understand that. And so they'll have their players do wraps, but then all of a sudden you talk about a, a cone that they have to pick up, put down and then split through. And then something that you start adding those things in and they almost have this like protective feel of that. No, 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 no. That's not what yeah. I do. And yeah. I coach, I don't, maybe you can help me kind of understand because I, I don't, I'm not asking you to ever check out our videos, but if you were every spring, um, it's basically the best I can do to to represent I'm possible in our program. That's what I try to yeah. do through all your videos, yeah. pick and choose and pull some things. But I get some feedback even from it. Like, you know, it it kind of looks like some gimmick. So, again, a, a, just any help to those coaches. <laughs> I think we need to re-identify what the word gimmick means. Um, a gimmick is, by definition, something that's designed just to draw attention. That's what a gimmick is. Um, and so, you know, somehow this word gimmick has gotten involved. So if you're using a training tool, it's gimmicky. Now you're a coach, you're using it. I guarantee you, you're not doing it to draw attention to yourself. Oh, no. no. So the, the whole idea yeah. that it's a gimmick yeah. is it, yeah. just, it, it's crazy. So, um, you know, what we need to start understanding about what it's doing is, like I said, it's the, it's the characteristic building. And what I always, most coaches at least are okay with pistol Pete. So I always use that as a, as a starting ground. If, if you're good with Pistol Pete, you don't realize it, but you're good with me <laughs> because Pistol did not do anything game situational. Mm -hmm. Everything he talked about was characteristic based. He never once said you got to play at this pace or, or do it based on this situation. You got to come off this ball screen. It, it was let's build your hands up, build your feet up, yeah. build your, your finger strength up, your quickness. It was always characteristics and skills and abilities. Yep. And all we've really done is expanded on it. Um, and so, you know, now through the use of accountability tools, I can make sure that not only your hands are quicker, but they're, they're doing more um, game like movements. I can make sure that your shoulder is getting down to a certain level. Um, and, and, and if coaches would understand that what we're doing is just helping a player's body learn, they would learn, very quickly that their pet peeves, we can help them really quick with. Mm. So the biggest one is coaches are always saying, Hey, get low, get low, get low. Yeah. And, and most coaches I think have the, the definition off also where they'll, they, they'll say get low and what they're meaning is knees and hips in basketball. It's shoulders, yep. not as much knees, little bit of hips, obviously. I mean, they have to bend, but I don't have to squat. And so I need to get a player's shoulders yeah, down. Even defensive stances. Like, well, I think yeah. the way that it's taught most of the time, like if you played, you're never in that, that right. position or else you're about to get beat. Anyway, yeah. sorry, go your ahead. Your shoulders are over your knees. Yeah. And so that that's that position. So if you tell a player to get low, a lot of times because of maybe that coach's teaching or coaches before, the player's thinking get low with knees and hips. Um, I had the same thing with, with Jeremy Lin when I had a chance to work with him when he was with the Hornets is I would tell him I need him to get lower. And he'd be like, man, all my coaches are saying that. And I said, oh, you know, so you're having a hard time with low? He's like, yeah, every single coach is not getting low enough. And so I asked him to define it, and he got down in a squat position. I was like, no, that's not what low means. I need you to get your shoulders down. So we put med balls on the floor and had him drive, and every time he got past it, he touched it. Really simple. And all of a sudden, Jeremy was able to redefine what low meant. Yeah. And it allowed him to add that piece to his game where before it was just really frustrating for him. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of players are dealing with frustration because their coach is telling them to get low. But what they really need is to touch something, to grab something and teach their body what low means. And then when you remove it, 
their body now knows what it means. They're going to be a lot different. So without those accountability tools, some players are just left to hopefully get it naturally. And you and I both know there's not a lot of naturals. So, you know, the naturals don't need it, but the the unnaturals do. Um, And so that's what training tools are best for. And and it's just building characteristics into a person's body. That's all it is. And I I think there's a lot of coaches out there probably like me that I, during second period athletics, it's me and 30 athletes. Like I don't have the ability to give them all individual attention. So if I was like every other coach that says, all right, Hey, remember uh, when we drop to go by, we're, we're all getting low. Well, and you, I love one of the phrases that you use in some videos is uh, there's different levels of low, but you know, when you've got, you got your six, five, you got your five, five. I mean, though they're both on different, uh, arenas of what low can be but the the accountability tools help all of them get to that point and it whenever a coach is if you'll see they drop they 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 grab a cone and they push it along a curve and they get that inside shoulder down it just reminds me of jordan driving the ball is up in his pocket and that inside hand is down and his shoulders down Mm -hmm. you can't get there by yourself your most players aren't willing to get that uncomfortable on their own and so it, the accountability tools, again, it just, it's brilliant to me. And you, and you know what I think a lot of it is, is, is coaches deal with habits. And I don't. When you work on skills, you deal with abilities. And habits and abilities are two very different things. So, for instance, if a coach looks at sliding that cone, the reason why a lot of times they don't like it is because they're not going to want to do that every day. Because that's how coaches think of stuff. I got to repeat and repeat and repeat. I got to build the habit. I don't want to spend my time doing that. So, but with abilities, it's a lot more um, what a procedural memory is. Are you familiar with procedural memories? Mm -mm. So procedural memory is learning how to ride a bike. So when a, when a person learns how to ride a bike, that's a procedural memory and studies will show that they can learn how to ride a bike in 30 to 45 minutes. Now, once you've learned how to ride a bike, as the saying goes, you never forget it, right? It's not a habit. I haven't mastered it yet, but it's mine. I own that ability to ride a bike and I'm never going to forget it. And over time, I get better and better. Procedural memories are actually in the same family as muscle memory. Muscle memories aren't habits. They're procedural. Hmm. Um, And so I don't need someone to master something. I don't need to do cone slides forever. I seem to do it enough until they get it, which can take about 20 to 40 minutes. Okay. And I'll never have to do that thing with them again. So, but that's completely countercultural to a lot of coaches is, wait, you're only going to do that with them once? Yeah. I just want their body to figure it out. Now I'm going to move to the next thing. So Victor Oladipo was my, was my favorite example. So when I had him with Oklahoma City Thunder, um, I got him right before he was traded. So that off season to Indiana. So, you know, we started doing cone slides because his body didn't know how to do that. He was very upright. He was very athletic, but I would always joke with him as he wasn't very coordinated. Athleticism which, and coordination. Which is crazy, crazy to think about right there at his <laughs> level. Yeah. But those are different. There's levels of coordination and there's levels of athleticism. And so he was still missing some, some coordination in how he moved. And one of them was low. So he hated cone slides. He hated it. But all I needed him to do it was a couple of times and his body figured it out. And I told him, Vic, as soon as you, as soon as you can do this, we'll never do it again. Hmm. And he loved it because he got to graduate that. Yeah. Then we got to the next skill and that he, maybe he didn't like. And hey, once you once you can figure out, we'll never do it again. And we moved through in one summer over 275 skills and methods that we did in order to build into his body the characteristics he needed. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that stuff. But that was a huge, huge reason of why he was all of a sudden most improved player and all star. It had nothing to do with anything game situational that we did because we didn't do any (laughs) for the entire summer. It was all characteristics and all traits based. So, um, you know, I I think that that's the thing that we have to keep in mind is you're just trying to get a player's body to figure out this thing and then you can move on past it. I think you really just helped me out because every spring, like I said, we have about a seven to eight week time. And you're right. There's that there's the more traditional coach part of me that says, We need to be repeating these things every day for a long period of time for these habits to come in. But what I've done with the guys is 
uh, I'll take a couple of your videos. And again, it, it, it might be pain, it, pain for you to, for you to ever be in the gym and kind of see me stumbling <laughs> through it, but I'm, you know, we do I'm our sure best. And, I'm sure you're doing yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, thanks. We do our best. And, and, uh, but you know, I, I basically on a Tuesday, I'll introduce some things and on a Wednesday, I will let them repeat it, but I've never known exactly where should I start? Like in the I'm possible map of things, even though I know yeah. you have a, a manual out there and I know like trainers can kind of get on board, but as a guy that's trying to do both, be their skills trainer in the spring, but then also on their high school coach, uh, it, I think you just freed me up. It doesn't really matter where I start, and it doesn't matter. I don't need to stick with these things very long as long as uh, they're basically they're getting a taste of it and they're having to do those actions, and then that that memory will become a part of it. Yeah, and and really, what I with skills, there is no necessary starting point because it's a checklist. So. And, and like I said, skills are interconnected. So uh, it, once again, that's completely different than most curriculums and programs that you would build because we're not progressively trying to build something. You know, it, instead, what I'm doing is making sure that I expose all this baseline stuff to a player and you never know what's going to unlock something for them. And, and that, that's really the key. Look at it this way. Um, you obviously know what a drop is. I don't know if all listeners and viewers will know what a drop is, but it's a pretty common set of footwork. Now, if I the ball's in my right hand, I split my feet, right foot goes forward, left foot goes back. Um, and so I, I drive out of that. Now there, if I always do the drop the same way, I'm not going to get every angle and perspective of a drop. Hmm. So if I always repeat the exact same drop footwork with a player, it's like if, if I get a new iPhone back when we had to do the thumbprint, I couldn't just put my thumbprint on there once. I'd have to put it on, and then I got to do this angle, then this angle, then the top, and I have to move it around until it finally can read that it got my entire thumbprint. That's how skills work. So if I'm working on a drop, I don't want to just do that footwork the same way. Hmm. I want to do it with this variation and this variation and get this angle of it and this angle of it so that player really experiences that whole drop. So I can do a drop um, grabbing a cone. That's one way. Now I'm going to do a drop and I'm going to stay more upright because there's different levels of low. Right. And so I'm doing a drop from these different perspectives. And if I just go through those drops, my players are going to be a lot better suited than if I only just repeated that one drop one way for the entire eight weeks. Hmm. Um, so not only is our skills interconnected, but one skill has its own checklist um, that's built into it too. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.